Britain, though, had not been so successful in the heavyweight division between the wars. Since the decline of Jack Johnson, two figures dominated this period. The first was Jack Dempsey, the so-called Manasseh Mauler, who beat Jess Willard, who had won the title from Jack Johnson in Cuba. Dempsey was involved in the first million dollar match when he fought the Frenchman Georges Carpentier, known rather mysteriously as the Orchid Man, in Jersey City, 1921. Carpentier was a great favourite with the fans in Europe, as well as being a favourite with the intellectual classes, naming George Bernard Shaw among his circle of friends. His good looks also meant that for the first time, women began to attend boxing matches in large numbers. He had an amazing career in the lead up to the Dempsey fight. Incredibly, he boxed in each of the then eight weight divisions, beginning as a 13-year-old flyweight in 1908. He became a war hero for France during World War I, winning the military medal. Dempsey, on the other hand, avoided military service, a decision that for some years made him unpopular. Dempsey, however, won the battle within two rounds as Capontier conceded too much weight. He met his nemesis, Gene Tunney, in 1926. Tunney was another darling of the intellectuals. Like Carpentier, he claimed George Bernard Shaw as a friend, but unlike Carpentier, had the necessary bulk and the ring science to beat an out-of-shape Dempsey. Dempsey also lost a rematch a year later, after which he retired. All right. Lenny? OK. Hello. He spent the rest of his life trying to win the affection of the American sporting public, who admired him for his achievements, but had never taken him to their hearts. Oh, nice one. How about a wrestling match, sir? A recent convention in Chicago featured the personal appearance of Jack Dempsey and Gene Tunney, who met here in a famous battle for the world heavyweight title in 1928. An excited crowd waited to see how these two ex-champions would make out now. Would the winner challenge Rocky Marciano? It was a great fight anyway. Waltzing Matilda, what a fight. But by the time he died in 1983, he had at last won them over. In the first half of the 20th century, British fighters found considerable success in the lower weight divisions. Welsh flyweight Jimmy Wilde, who fought a total of an astonishing 864 contests, many, it must be said, in fairground boxing booths. Physically, he defied the laws of nature. He was a strong but tiny man who packed a punch. And so much that he was known as the ghost with a hammer in his hand. Hands which won him the World Flyweight title in 1916, which he held until 1923. 